Hell's Bell, it's Helen Flanagan. The only way is jump, it's Miles Jump. And their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, Ak Tung, baby, it's Henning Bay. The Brooker Prize, it's Alex Brooker. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut, a show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 36% of people think the best way to dump someone is over the phone? Please press 1 for it's not you, it's me. 2 for we can still be friends and 3 for I'm sorry, I've got your mum pregnant. 25% <laughs> of men pretend to be asleep if they hear a strange noise in the night. I can't get to sleep sometimes because there's this strange bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. I asked my girlfriend, is there a fly in here? And she said, yes, yes, yes! <laughs> and 73% of dieters abandon their diet at the weekend. And there's a special name for those dieters, fat people. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. John's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about? What well, have been chatting about? On Tuesday, England won the World Cup, didn't they? Hey, good Hey, Hey, good Hey! Who are you? <laughs> Sorry, man, <laughs> Sorry. Henning, so you, you've lived... How long have you lived in the UK? Since 2002. So I've seen them, I've seen them win many, many World Cups. <laughs> I don't enjoy football as much as I used to, because our German side, we are rubbish these days. We have not, not won a major tournament for 17 years. <laughs> Haven't in, been to a final of one for about five years. And, <laughs> and we been to a semi-final of one for practically 18 months, so... <laughs> Can I remind you you're a guest here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what? <laughs> you a big football fan, Helen? Um, yeah, I like football. I think it can be quite exciting. But I've been away, so I haven't actually caught up the news. So they had this, um, they had a game that basically got them towards the, the World Cup, yeah? So who was that against? <laughs> Against, they beat they beat Leeds. They beat Leeds. No, Eng they didn't. <laughs> no, so it was England, England against... played against Jossie's Giants. No, no. Who did England play against? England played against. Count Duckula's eleven. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. no. They played um, Poland. The Poles. They looked ill, though, didn't they? I saw that. The Polish people in general, they look fairly ill. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever, whoever they replaced, so they always looked as if they hadn't slept for three weeks. <laughs> They've had a tough time of it, historically, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Maybe they've been watching the, the History Channel just before the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what those Germans did to us. <laughs> they realised, actually, we should be playing with the English. <laughs> Uh, Sean, if it was a choice, OK, between England winning the World Cup and Chelsea, your team, winning the European Championship, what would you go for? Well, one that's not plausible, is it? <laughs> I think Chelsea are a good side. <laughs> Just literally no chance of England winning the World Cup. You say that, but on the other side... Hey! Yeah. <laughs> so if it was a choice between England winning the World Cup and Leeds not being relegated again... <laughs> Somebody's Googled football this week, haven't they? <laughs> Funny is now they're starting to wheel out all the statistics, isn't it? Like, uh, that England hasn't lost a football game in Brazil since 1972. <laughs> well, Germany hasn't lost a World War since 1945, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all amounts to very little. <laughs> you know? These are all good stats. They're really getting me off for it. I think we're going to win. <laughs> I think, the, the, obviously, the big story is that Roy Hodgson, he gets us to the World Cup, and he doesn't... They don't even give him 12 hours. Like, his duvet's still warm. He's just got out of it. And there's, like, Roy's a racist on the front cover of The Sun. This ridiculous story uh, about him... Part of his half-time team talk was this joke, a motivational joke, about two monkeys in a spaceship 
and an, an astronaut. And uh, the, the joke is that uh, the NASA speaks to the first monkey and says, switch on the retro boosters and the cap. And then in the second monkey, do this, whatever, and that happens. And then they show the astronaut. He goes, I know, I know. He said, feed the monkeys and don't touch anything. And he told that joke. And then he was saying to, to the players, feed the monkey, meaning he meant Andrus Townsend, as in he's the main man. But it's been taken by the press as a racist statement. It's just an old joke, isn't it? He's done well, nothing. Not, well, for the, for the ironic thing about it is it's an old Irish joke. It used to be, you know, it's a racist joke about the Irish. And Roy's gone, oh, I know what, it's a bit racist. I'll just say astronaut. <laughs> I won't say Irish astronaut. <laughs> he thinks he's removed. <laughs> he thinks he's removed. Racism <laughs> <laughs> point, not He's seeing. wily. So the players came out in support. I just don't think they've understood yet. I think they'll, the penny will drop in the midweek that it, they think he was being racist. So that's why they're going, it's ridiculous, right? Oh, what? He's not... Oh, I thought he was being racist. That's disgusting. If he's telling jokes in the dressing room when he could have been being racist, <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> but the player himself has come out and said it's, it's nothing, it's not newsworthy. And, and on, Sky, on Sky News, they were reporting the story with the strap line underneath saying, Andros Townsend says, this is not newsworthy. <laughs> We're here at the FA, and then what, what Roy Hodgson has to say, and I just go, Andrews Town said, not newsworthy, not newsworthy. I mean, the irony was delicious. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know an enormous amount about football, despite the fact that I've been talking so much during this section of the show. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> there, there's something about Hodgson. He doesn't necessarily have a great deal of, sort of confidence about him. He doesn't necessarily look confident. If, if your boiler stopped working and you sort of rang the yellow page and said, can someone mend the boiler, and Roy Hodgson turned up at your door, you'd immediately think, well, he's not going to get it started, is he? Look at him. <laughs> Let's have a look at him. <laughs> I mean, he looks fine, though, doesn't he? he looks, that, that fills oh. me with confidence. That's, that's a man saying, oh. I don't know what's wrong with your boiler. <laughs> <laughs> that's a man saying, I'm, has anyone seen my chin? <laughs> What I liked about the way the press are just desperate to get some kind of innuendo or pun on the word Brazilian. So they're, and they're just these really like these headlines that grammatically don't work. Like, yeah, let's get a Brazilian. Because they know that the Brazilian means the waxing job, but it doesn't quite work. <laughs> they should just go, we're in the World Cup, shave your pubes. <laughs> <laughs> there, we've said it. That's what we really want to talk about, you shaving your pubes. We know we're not going to win, so shave it off. <laughs> uh, all right, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, this is the news that the England football team has won a short holiday in Brazil. <laughs> so England beat Poland in the football, while Poland beat England in the putting-up shelves and the childminding. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, the... They've sent Boris Johnson and George Osborne to China. Yeah, oh, yeah. A trade trip, really, to uh, encourage trade links. Let's have a look at Boris Johnson in China. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him at the Forbidden City. <laughs> They're not the ideal people, George Osborne and Boris Johnson, to send out. I mean, normally, when we want to get people interested in our country, we wheel out David Beckham, don't we, Prince William. We normally send them out. But, I mean, when I met Boris Johnson, it put me off living in London. <laughs> Kenny, what do you think of him? I don't know. I'm in two minds. I'm obviously a, a Londoner in it. Obviously, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that means uh, he's, my, he's my governor, he's my mayor. And uh, personally, I like my politicians really, really dull. Once been, twice shy, yeah. <laughs> I really like Boris. You like Boris Johnson? Yeah, I Is do. Is it because he's got the same hair colour as you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think he's really cute and I think he's really funny and I can see why they would send him over because he's kind of like... He'd probably charm them because he's really funny. But it's just... I just don't think he's, he's not a serious person. He doesn't... He never commits to anything. Well, there has been, there has been a lot of speculation uh, over the last little while about him being the next leader of the Conservatives and he was asked recently about his ambitions. Take a look. Matthew Dancona's book, In It Together, he quotes a conversation between you and David Cameron where on the night of your second victory over Livingston, you say to Cameron, this is my last election, Dave. I want to go and earn some money. Well, I don't remember saying that. David Cameron replies, apparently, that's bollocks. <laughs> is it bollocks? Um, what, the whole story or what? No, no, the, the idea that what you want to do when you leave the mayoralty of London is to go and make some money. Well, I've just... I've just said, you in might case you weren't paying attention, <laughs> that I was... One thing I had thought of doing, perhaps in a 
completely vain and uh, uh, unrealistic way was romantic fiction with those kind of glossy novels at airports with very embossed covers with pictures of orchids. Perhaps I'd adopt a, a pseudonym so that you, you, might, you, might, you might, you know, your hand might waver over the... the I'll tell you what, you're not going to make a fortune out of that, Boris. <laughs> there you go, all right. But you, well, I mean, you have... Try you... something else, then. Something will crop up. So that's why he's such a good politician, because that was a genuine question about are you really... Do you care about the city you're mayor of or do you just want to be prime minister? And what he said was something so stupid that nobody concentrates on what his answer is. No. Go, Isn't it true that you killed 100 people last week for fun? Well, yes, but one day I might set up a clown company and call myself Titty McVitty. <laughs> <laughs> sending him to China on a trade mission and, and George Osmond is like sending Jedward to sort out Syria. <laughs> The Chinese just looking at him thinking, well, why have you sent him this idiot? Yeah. <laughs> Man that looks like he's just come round for a general anaesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Uh, right, uh, what else do we to be talking about? John, Alex, Henning. There's a new show on telly, Jimmy called The X Factor. <laughs> I watched it until the judges' houses this year and I thought, I'll give it a go, and then they sent Paul home and Louis might as well just gone, oh, well, I've heard y'all sing, but I'm going to pick the youngest and the ones that'll go on the poster stair on the bedroom walls. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolute bullshit that Paul went home. And that's my serious answer. I think Paul had the best voice in the competition. They told him that in the first round, and now what they're going to do is to go, oh, come back next year, and I hope he does with an Uzi. <laughs> So the X Factor live show started last week. Shall we take a look at one of the performances? This is uh, Shelley Smith. But the secret is still my own. Oh, my love for you is still unknown. What do you think, Sean? Well, I think she'd make a very good prison guard. <laughs> <laughs> She's got up there, she could see her on the corner of a prison camp, <laughs> singing, you know, about her dreams and whatever, but also keeping a good eye on the exercise yard <laughs> with an M16. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, do you watch X Factor? Uh, yeah, very, very big fan. Um, <laughs> I mean, essentially, it's Bake Off without ovens. Um, <laughs> it's a bit sort of samey same, isn't it? It's people standing and singing, sometimes they go up and down. I, I sort of feel that it's ready for something else, and I, I would really get behind, you know, like if they had a proper brass band on or something <laughs> like that. If, that what that programme really needs is a, is a decent trombonist. <laughs> Helen, who's your favourite judge? Who do you like? Um... Favourite judge? Favourite judge? <laughs> Nobody's got a favourite judge. Oh, probably a Justice Edie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the X Factor. Oh, Who's sorry, your favourite judge on the still... X Factor? Yeah. I think Nicole does a really good job, and also she's amazing. Nicole Schitzinger. Yeah, she's got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's definitely got something. Yeah, I like Nicole, and they brought Sharon Osbourne back, which is I know quite from the actually. dead. Jesus. By the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a medical miracle that they've got what her. Have they got a wind cannon just aimed at her. <laughs> Henning, do you watch X Factor? Uh, no, I must admit I haven't watched it. Strange concept, isn't it, going on a reality TV show? Because the people, essentially, what they end up with, they end in a situation where they'll be temporarily too well-known to take public transport, but because it's unwaged, they're still too poor to travel by cab. <laughs> and that is the real top story for me in <laughs> that whole context. Well, a leading psychologist this week claims the X Factor producers are deliberately creating cruel twists because viewers have become immune to sob stories. 
I'm bored of them. I mean, what sort of person uses a sob story to get on television and become famous? <laughs> Whether you're allowed to say disability, it's a sob story, isn't it? It's a Paralympic legacy, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Do a bit of sport now, we're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the X Factor's up there. <laughs> yes, the X Factor live finals have started. Lorna Simpson claims she was voted <laughs> off X Factor because of a fix. Yes, Lorna. God fixed it by giving you an average voice and a shit personality. <laughs> Sean's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? The Andrew Mitchell thing. That's what people have been talking about. The disbelief, the incredulity of the whole nation that the police might have made something up. That story. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's ice cream men just stopping, switching off the machine, just going, what's the point of selling ice cream <laughs> in a world where policemen <laughs> make things up? <laughs> so, last September, Andrew Mitchell was accused of swearing at the police and calling officers plebs when they wouldn't let him ride his bike through the main gates at Downing Street. He denied calling them plebs. The, the worst thing about it is, obviously, he's, a, he's coming out of it all right now, whereas he's a, sort of, he's a massive yeah, knob, isn't he's, he? Well, Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> he's, I mean, he, Andrew Mitchell has nicknamed himself Big Swinging Dick. Yeah. I'd love That's... to have a nickname like that. That I is was... not going to happen. <laughs> I was called cock nose at university because I had a nose, well, shaped like a cock. A <laughs> couple of things. Firstly, your cock is a weird shape. <laughs> what do you call it when a scandal becomes a scandal? Because it was plebgate, so now it's plebgate gate. <laughs> plebgate itself has become a scandal because it was. If it happened in Harrogate, it would have been Harrogate gut <laughs> gut. In the end of the day, we're discussing now a story that exactly nobody knows anything about because, well. First, the police said that's happened, so he swore, and then it turns out no, he didn't. Apparently, they said there was loads of onlookers, then there was nobody standing there. <laughs> well, you can't really trust the police, can you? And then somebody else goes, Yeah, but that Mitchell fellow used to be an investment banker, you can't trust him either, can you? <laughs> and then everybody goes, Well, who can you trust? Let's go to church on Sunday. <laughs> I'm confused. I've not felt this way since I watched Inception. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Let's see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, the Plebgate row has intensified this week. Andrew Mitchell's always disputed the police's version of events, saying, I 100% deny calling those pricks plebs. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. One more thing still to get. What do you think, Sean? Uh, the Queen has got a, um... She's, she's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> the Queen is not pregnant. Oh. Well, she, uh, the Queen has been in the news, though. She attacked a... Uh, a, a, a child. A child, yeah. <laughs> in a park. <laughs> and got away with it again. Because <laughs> she's got some kind of immunity where she can just go up and slap children around the back of the head. <laughs> and then just get carried off on the back of a beef eater. <laughs> That wave looks really sinister when you think about that. That's just air out of the window going, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the Queen attacking the children in the park? <laughs> no. <laughs> OK, so the Queen has been in the news because of her finances this week. Yes, she, she can't afford to heat all the palaces. I know. Yeah. Awful. The castles. Poor baby. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think of this, Miles? Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I worry about her the way I would about any, any relative, really. <laughs> Henning, in the way that China wanted Hong Kong back, would you like the Queen back? <laughs> uh, you can keep them all. We had royal family and all that, uh, but these days in Germany we haven't got the class system. It's like everybody's doing incredibly well. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good enough to cut it back home. <laughs> what job did you do in Germany before you came here? Well, I'm trying to do stand-up comedy, but not good enough. And over here in Britain, bloody easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
can tell you it's not in our top five, but the state of the Queen's finances has come under scrutiny. 39% of royal buildings are in need of repair. There's one crumbling facade that's constantly leaking. But doctors say Prince Philip is on the mend. <laughs> Buckingham Palace is riddled with holes, especially in the walls between Prince Philip's dressing room and Kate Middleton's bathroom. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. I keep seeing Banksy in the pissing papers. You're not a big fan of the Banksy? He's a vandal. Uh, he's a bloody public nuisance, is what he is. <laughs> and for every funny Banksy, where they go, oh, that's a good one, for every Banksy, there's a Binksy and a Spanksy and a Wanksy and a Monksy and a... <laughs> someone who's just drawing on walls. So this is the story. Banksy anonymously set up a stall in Central Park, uh, selling original prints worth £20,000 each for just $60. People were haggling, that's what I like. New Yorkers were going up to Banksy and going, I ain't paying $60 for that piece of shit. <laughs> And he had to stand there and go, oh. <laughs> He's uh, anonymous, isn't he? It was, yeah. it, and I could understand him being anonymous if all he ever drew was, like, a cock and balls. <laughs> yeah, you would be proud of that, would you? <laughs> well, it's good for a city. This is why he's never been caught, cos, really, when he's in London, people know, oh, this will create a lot of tourist attractions, and he's pretty much been invited to New York to do an exhibition. So that's what... If you wanted to catch Banksy, I don't imagine there's many people with a Bristolian accent wandering around New York at the moment. Here, you ain't got 500 cans of red spray paint, have you, geezer? <laughs> <laughs> so what does he do with drawings of? Like, what does he do your artwork of? We can't show any Banksy. He won't well... let us. Although, who do we ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we show some and just go, yeah. I'll, I'll say I'm Banksy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the fuck is he gonna do? I'm Banksy. No, well, I'm Banksy. No, I'm Banksy. I'm, I'm Banksy, I think. Well, no, no, I'm... When I would I'm say Banksy. it's me, but no-one's gonna believe I'm that skilled with my hands. <laughs> Cool. Let's have a look and see if Banksy's up there. Yeah. Yes, graffiti artist Banksy set up a secret stall in New York and sold his artwork for just $60. There hasn't been a discount on art this big since Rolf Harris was arrested. <laughs> so those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, the US debt crisis has been resolved. Americans are going to have to tighten their belts, which won't be easy for them, as most of them are wearing elasticated trousers. <laughs> British gas has put up prices by 10%. Our only hope of beating the energy crisis now is to build more wind farms and to switch exclusively to Mexican food. <laughs> and it's been revealed this week that the Soviet Union once ran up a huge debt to New Zealand after importing massive quantities of butter. I'm not sure where the Soviets kept all this butter, but I'm guessing in the middle of Kiev. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, Sean, Miles and Helen have two points. John, Alex and Henning have three points. <laughs> so, our next round is pick of the polls. OK, Goldstein. What do you like to look off? Oh, well, it's uh, Yasser Arafat. Yasser well, Arafat there. So, I can't really see the monitor for him. <laughs> I just, just assumed he was there. <laughs> Simon Cow. The picture's Simon Cow taking a picture of himself. <laughs> OK, you, you've chosen the selfie there. A recent survey revealed that British people take 35 million selfies a month, so we asked our studio audience, do people take too many pictures of themselves? Yes or no? I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, are you aware of how many pictures you take of yourself in the average week? Well, all girls do my age. Like, you know, when you're going out, before you go out, you take lots of pictures and stuff. I mean, if I look on Instagram, I can look at my account and there's loads of all my friends and there's loads of things and everyone's got selfies. Let's have a look at some of the pictures of you recently. Um, <laughs> have you put on weight since that was taken? <laughs> 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 no, there's, there's an art to it. <laughs> Do you take many pictures of yourself, Miles? Uh, I've knocked a few out. Miles, one in eight people admit to taking sexy selfies. Yeah? Are you one of those? Ah, uh, listen, if it comes out sexy, it comes out sexy. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I just... I just think of the photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is my favourite ever selfie of all time. So, in 2011, uh, a macaque monkey took a selfie after wildlife photographer David Slater left his camera unattended. Here's the selfie taken by a monkey of himself. <laughs> It's for real, yeah. He, le he left his camera out and they the monkeys got hold of it. Really? That's a genuine thing. Here's another incredible selfie. See if you recognise anyone from this photo. 
Yeah. No, not really. The guy on the left is the Pope. What? <laughs> Some kids took a little selfie with him, which I think is quite a modern thing for the Pope to do. Um, they did it on their phone or his, cos he's got the Pope mobile, hasn't he? I keep reading <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, you took a selfie this week. <laughs> can, can you talk me through what was going on there? I mean, <laughs> this week. That so was, what happened? That was my New Year's party. I had a beard, and I decided that throughout the evening I would shave the beard off in instalments <laughs> as a little treat for my guests. <laughs> that was the penultimate stage, and they call that the monkey tail beard, and it looks like a monkey tail. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've got one of your selfies, don't worry about that. What? We've got a selfie of you. Let's have a look. <laughs> I'll tell you what. what was that for? It was for... I did, like, a documentary on weight loss. So it was to illustrate my weight loss and also the last one to send to a couple of people, you know what I mean? <laughs> you look really good. Oh, thank you. You can follow me on Instagram, if you like. <laughs> I already follow you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow you back. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> OK, so do people take too many pictures of themselves? Uh, what do you think our audience thought? Yes or no, John? Yeah. But we have to define <laughs> what is too many. Uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go, yeah. yeah. You're going, yeah, OK, what are you going for? Well, too many. Well, it's a very interesting question that uh, Henning has raised. Too many. Because too many was suggested is actually causing a problem, that there are consequences to this, the, the amount of photographs that have been created. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't equivocally say that right, the sorry. consequences of the amount of photographs that have been produced has a negative impact on the well-being of the nation. So I don't think I'll feel comfortable saying, yes, too many have been taken. Does anyone want anything from the shops? <laughs> <laughs> Helen, let's go to you. Do people take too many selfies? There's not, like, an amount, so no. I can tell you the answer is yes. 79% of our studio audience think people do take too many pictures of themselves. 25% of people have dirty photos on their phones. Helen Flanagan has literally hundreds of absolutely filthy photos on her mobile. I know, cos I sent them to her. <laughs> John, Alex Henning, pick a question. Let's have the nice tea, the nice roast dinner. I can tell you that's a dish of squirrel and mash. Oh, yeah. genuinely. So here's your related question. This week, the new president of the RSPB encouraged people to eat animals killed by the roadside. So we asked our studio audience, would you eat roadkill, yes or no? At the moment, yeah, I would eat it raw off the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten meat for a while and I'm gagging for some. <laughs> so if it died by accident or of laughter, I will eat it raw. <laughs> I've, eaten, I've eaten flies when I've been on my bike. <laughs> Well, it depends on where you live, isn't it? Like, if you live in America, of course you eat roadkill. Because you drive into bears or moose or... So, like, proper big animals where there's a good steak on them. <laughs> but over here, essentially, well, all you have is hedgehogs or something, and there's just nothing on them. So, and then <laughs> just squashed into the tarmac. And so it's more road than kill. <laughs> That's disgusting. Do you have a look at some of the things you've eaten? Not really. <laughs> Let's have a little look at you eating some stuff. That's camel toe. What do you mean camel toe? You've got to eat a portion of the camel toe. That is a camel's foot. Camel toe. <laughs> yeah, that's a try it. Chew, swallow, chew, 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 swallow. <laughs> What's in the middle of that hot cross bun? A hot cross bun. Bum. <coughs> it's bum. <coughs> oh my god, are you joking me? It's an ostrich anus. <coughs> there you are. <coughs> Tell me something nice. Think about your line on the beach. You can hear the waves, when the shores, and you've got a pina colada by the side of you, and you're gonna go out tonight, mm. and you just get your tongue topped up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a line there, oh. and you're chewing oh, a god. club sandwich. Oh. Mm. It's not good. Yeah. Go on, you know that. And you're off. Well done. Good guy. Have a drink. <laughs> what was worse, the camel toe or the anus? 
I can't remember, but when you watch your back, you're like, oh, don't be soft, like, it can't be that bad. But actually, when you're doing it, it's horrific. What did it taste like once? I can never actually eat any more, like, turkey or chicken sandwiches because it just reminds me of that. I've never steak. heard anyone say that before. I ate a thing that tasted like chicken, so it's put me off chicken. Normally, they just go, it wasn't that bad, it tasted like chicken. No, but, like, a minging chicken, like... Minging oh. chicken. <laughs> don't think it'd be a good new flavour of crisp. No, <laughs> it'd be vile. Camel toe. <laughs> What about the ostrich anus? How was that? Um, I can't actually remember what it tasted like. Probably like normal anus. <laughs> <laughs> Would you eat roadkill? Well, it's hard for me to eat roadkill because I've got a sweet tooth. <laughs> you know, unless I'd run over a trifle. <laughs> Oh, would you eat roadkill? Nah, but then I'm kind of a stickler for like, I'm the sort of person who won't eat meat that's cooked on the dirty George Foreman. On <laughs> the dirty George Foreman? You know, like the little grills. It cleans itself, the George Foreman. <laughs> Doesn't in my George house. <laughs> People come in when you leave the room and do that, but it's not self cleaning. <laughs> It cleans itself a house, doesn't it? I find. I just leave, I come back, everything's clean. <laughs> OK, so we asked our studio audience, would you eat roadkill, yes or no? What are you going to go with, John? People don't eat bruised fruit, do they? So they're not going to eat a <laughs> smattered rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. OK, so you're saying no. What are you going to say, Sean? Uh, I, well, I think most people wouldn't. I mean, I would. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would. Well, as long as I knew it was fresh, and if that if it's wrong to drive around an owl sanctuary with a cricket bat, <laughs> guilty as charged. <laughs> Lock me up and throw away the key, why don't you? <laughs> Got a luminous cricket bat at night time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a show I'd watch instead of X Factor. <laughs> Are going to say yes? OK, I can tell you the answer is no. 61% oh, of our studio audience fucks. would not eat roadkill. <laughs> 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 You say you wouldn't eat roadkill, but if you've ever eaten at a Little Chef, chances are you probably already have. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round, and here is your question. Worst thing about camping? What do you think, Sean? You can't pretend you're out when the Jehovah's Witnesses come round. <laughs> See the silhouette. They can see the silhouette of you creeping round inside the <laughs> Earlier this year, I went with a few friends to the French Alps for some camping and uh, mountain hiking. So, and there was two downsides to that holiday. One was camping, the other one was the walking. <laughs> so, I mean, mountain walking, that's a strange one, because, I mean, if it really was that good, I mean, why is no other fucker doing it? <laughs> Have you, have you ever been camping? I've always wanted to go camping, actually, because I thought, you know, go with your boyfriend camping, it might be kind of romantic, but, you know, you just get kind of got, like, frizzy hair, you can't shower properly. I'm not really a big fan, to be honest with you. There's a thing called glamping now. I know, that sounds really cool. Which is camping, but it's like you've stay in a super posh tent <laughs> with a bed in it that's basically like a hotel. Would you do that? But that isn't proper camping. No, yeah. but on the plus side, it's nice. <laughs> Sean, you could go camping quite a lot. What do you like about it? What do I like about yeah, it? What's, what's, what's the attraction? It's... cheap. <laughs> no, I like going to the toilet and everyone knows what you're going to do. <laughs> the toilet roll in your hand. Cos it's, it's weird telling people on the way... Yeah. In a regular hotel, I'll stop people and say... <laughs> you never guess where I'm going. <laughs> but I haven't got a toilet the roll to prove it. I just need to walk around and go past every tank and go, oh, I've got my toilet roll here and I'm headed over there. I think we know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> me, off the telly, I'm going to the toilet. John, did you go camping? No. No, I tried it. I, I like the idea of being in the wilderness, but then I find out how scared I am of everything. Everything pretty much from a worm upwards. <laughs> I'm pretty shit scared of. Sleeping in a wet, <laughs> don't like that. Um, just the general loneliness. The general loneliness? How's that different from home? <laughs> There's a telly at home and I can have the voices. <laughs> Put my DVD on and pretend, oh, I'm going to sleep in my bar in New York. Where everybody knows my name. <laughs> you were close before the sleeping in the way. The weather. The right answer. That's simple.
Yes, the worst thing about camping is bad weather. I love going camping in a tent made of bricks shaped like a hotel. <laughs> I think the worst thing about camping is the bit where Paul Gascoigne turns up with half a roast chicken and a fishing rod. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Miles and Helen have two points, John, Alec and Henning have six Yay. points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.